What's going on, guys? Back here to the video today. Got a pretty cool one. Uh, um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Today, we're gonna be installing these bad boys on the uh, Mac Pro. Um, I've been having these CPU. I've had these CPUs on my desk for about what two, three weeks now. Um, I've just been very, very, very busy. I've been out of town, uh, back and forth for the past couple weeks. It's just sorry. Um, I've had a couple videos that I, um, I started recording, but I didn't never finish them. I've also got some cool, uh, not really cool, but I got an update um, on a couple things. First things first, I come down here, oh boy, and as you guys may recognize this, this is the i7 uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, I think it's dead. Uh, he dead. It's dead. It's dead. Uh, yeah, it's dead. It's, um, GPU finally bit the, bit the dust or whatever. Um, you can't even do, like, the, uh, GPU mod anymore. So, that's for sale. It's done. It won't even boot up anymore. But I want to show you guys kind of what it's doing. It acts like it wants to boot up. It's going to sit there and the screen's just going to go blank. It's going to go white. Uh, I'm tired of dealing with it. I really am. I'm just going to keep it underneath the bed. With my other broken Mac. As you can see over there. But yep. Yeah, just sits there. Uh, I don't feel like dealing with it anymore. I don't know what I'm going to get for a laptop. I really don't. Uh, I don't even know, man. I'm thinking about getting like a 17 inch 09. Or just going and waiting another month and just going ahead and getting a 2014 or 2015 retina but uh i don't know i really don't know what i'm gonna get so yeah i'm just gonna close this because it's making me upset just looking at it but so uh, today's main focus though oh yeah in the second update is i got another z420 workstation uh i buy these things all the time um they're cheap they're like really really cheap and whenever they go on sale, I'll try to buy two or three or four. So, yeah. I uh, I really don't have any plans for this machine. I'm just waiting for somebody to come pick it up. Uh, if they do, if they don't, I might just keep it. I don't know. It's been sitting in my room for the past, uh, I don't know, two, three weeks. And, yeah. Uh, the T, what is it, T3610? It's still chilling, waiting on parts. And we're going to be working on this guy today. So, let me go ahead and kind of explain to you. So these are X, these are 3.06 gigahertz uh, dual six core CPUs. Um, the reason I'm doing this and not doing the X5690 is because I am spending more money on, I got these basically for free by the way guys. Um, I really didn't want to spend a lot of money on them because I am buying CPUs for this guy or a CPU for this guy very, very soon. So. Well, after some things in that broke, but this is getting a CPU upgrade within the next month or so. So look forward to that. But today is about the Mac Pro. So I'm going to go ahead and start benchmarking, do the before, and then I can show you after results, after we do the CPU upgrade. All right, guys. Well, um, just a quick update. It's actually like an hour later. Uh, I kept trying to download the, uh, this update. I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, update the firmware real quick so we can this is something that i've been meaning to do but yeah after this we should be able to go ahead and install the cpu all right guys so just updated the firmware we're all now on 1.44.000 and here is the specs before so two by 2.4 gigahertz quad core xeons um, 1066 megahertz. That'll be 1333 once you finish the CPU upgrade. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So I finally got everything all laid out here. Uh, got my CPUs, thermal compound. Uh, you can use, um, I got alcohol pads cause I find it's easier, but you can use uh, rubbing alcohol. I just got these alcohol prep pads. 
to be used to wipe the, uh, the old thermal compound off the top of the heat sink and the CPU. I uh, also have, this is optional, some blow-off brand air duster. Uh, this is just like some CVS Pharmacy uh, kind of deal. Just got that because it uh, hasn't really been cleaned out in a while. So, what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and remove... Actually, I'm going to keep everything on. I'm going to blow this off, off camera, because I don't want dust to get everywhere. Uh, I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to go ahead and start taking this apart. I do want to air dust it with everything on because if I do it with everything off, there's a chance that CPU can get inside either the sockets or the uh, the dim slots with the RAM. So I'm going to go ahead and blow this off and I'll be right back. All right, so we should be good to go now. I just went ahead and blew everything out. It looks so much better than it did when it started. Uh, I can't really tell on camera right now because it's kind of dark in here, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the upgrade. So first things first you want to do is get your X wrench. Uh, I'm not sure what it is in uh, millimeters or whatever. I'm pretty sure it's like a three millimeter or something like that or four. I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and start undoing the bolts. Now, this is a 2010 Mac Pro. So it doesn't really matter how many turns you do because it has the heat sink. I'm sorry, it has the IHS, the heat spreader on it. Um, so you don't have to use washers or anything like that to space out the heat sink. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn. I still am going to count the turns just because I'm a little bit on the... I want to be a little bit on the safer side. So, and you want to do this in a counterclockwise uh, method. All right, guys. Well, I was actually incorrect about the size of the socket. It's actually an, a 1 8 inch. I don't know if you guys can see that. If it'll focus. Yeah, no, not really. But yeah, it was actually a 1 8 inch or an 8 inch. I don't know. Um, Allen key wrench. So, I went ahead and got the first. CPU heat sink off. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the second one right now. You're gonna have to apply a little bit of pressure in you know, order to get these to break off the first time, especially if you're on the uh, stock CPUs like I am. You might hear some sounds. It might sound like you're breaking something, but trust me, you're not breaking anything. All right, now that we can see PUs, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off the top of my heat sinks and I'm gonna go ahead and open up my thermal compound. And then we can go ahead and move on to the install. Oop, just dropped it. Got a fresh tube of Thermaltake TG7. It doesn't really matter what you use as long as you use some, you know, some pretty decent stuff. Uh, this stuff works probably just fine. Uh, I didn't really have any time to order any Arctic Silver kits. So yeah, just kind of did that. And that should work just fine. It even comes with a little applicator pad if it'll focus. Applicator thingy. Don't know if I'll use that, but you know, whatever. It's good to have. Uh I've got the prep pads here and I got my new CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these off real quick and uh I guess I can show you how to clean them off. It's pretty straightforward. Just take a uh I'm using alcohol pads. You can use pretty much uh, just alcohol in a cotton swab or anything like that. Just take one and I just rub in small circles. It just comes right off. Just use the back. It'll focus. And it just comes right off. And I'll finish this up with some... Um, actual alcohol and I'll just uh, clean off the surface and uh, it's coming out pretty good so I'm going to do the other one real quick and I'll be right back alright everyone so I pretty much got the heat sinks as clean as I could get them um, as you can see camera doesn't really do it justice but it's very clean um, what I did was I used the pads and then I finished up with some rubbing alcohol solution 
and a microfiber towel to get all the um, excess fibers that the um, alcohol pads left because you do not want those anywhere near the uh, CPU or the CPU socket. Apparently those can cause uh, electrostatic issues, but that's just what I've heard. I'm not sure if that's super, super important or not, but what we're going to go ahead and do is start removing the old CPUs. And one thing I did want to note, um, make sure you keep track of which heatsink goes where. I just put them on their respective sides. Um, it, you don't want to mix these up. So, I'm going to go ahead and start removing the CPU. This is CPU. I'm not sure it's A or B, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and pull the clip. Just releases that, and then I'm going to gently take this out. Um, hmm. I see the arrow pointing that way. Just want to keep that in mind. I want to take this out as lightly as possible. I do not want to bend any pins. Okay, like I said, you want to try to remove the CPU as gently as possible to prevent bent pins. So I'm going to pick it up by its sides and. Try to get it out there as quick as possible because it's very, very, very um, tricky to try to pick it out of the socket. So, here's the first CPU out. Focus. Um, this is the stock 2.4 gigahertz quad core. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be replaced with a 3.06 gigahertz um, X5675, I believe it is. I'm not sure what I said before, but it's a X5675. So, first one's out. I'm going to go ahead and set that down there so it's not going to be reusing them. And I'm going to go ahead and work on the second CPU here. So I'm going to go ahead and lift up on the arm. Okay. This little dust bunny still left over. I don't want any of those near my CPU socket. Okay, so that's both CPUs removed. Let's see here. Yeah, both CPUs removed. I did want to get those dust bunnies off of the... Um, I'm guessing that's the North Bridge. So, but anyway, I'm rambling. Here are the new CPUs. Uh, two X5675s. You don't want to touch these, by the way. You kind of want to handle my by the edges. as much as you possibly can. And here's the new units. I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but yeah, you can't really see it at all. But X5675, 3.06 gigahertz. So yeah, let's go ahead and drop this one in. Make sure the arrow is facing where it was. Where's the arrow, where's the arrow? Okay, here's the arrow. It has like a groove. It has like a kind of a slant onto it. So it's right there. Drop it in there. Give it a little wiggle. Make sure it's good. <coughs> Make sure it's good. And I'll go ahead and close that. And give the retainer clip a good close. CPU number one or number two, I'm not sure which one it is. I'm not trying to be technical, but it's in there. Let's go ahead and do number two. You guys want to check that out. The second X5675. All right. Let's go ahead and lift this up one more time. And the CPU is going to be down this way this time. So, and also it's marked on top of the um, retainer clip or on the bottom of the retainer clip or retainer or whatever it's called. What is this thing called? It's marked right there on the bottom. So, I'm going to go ahead and open this up once more. Chop it in even, very evenly. Okay. 
give it a shake, make sure it's in there properly, and close the retainer clip. All right, and she's in there. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply the thermal compound. Um, some people use a dot. Some people do the line method. I am going to use the partial line method. So I go ahead and start almost in the center. Not in the center, but almost diagonally. I don't even know what I'm saying. You guys get the point. You guys know how to do thermal compound. Uh, so yeah, that is on there. And that should be more than enough. Um, it's it's a good amount on there and it should distribute evenly once the CPUs go back on. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other CPU. Just go ahead and gently add some on there. And that should be more than enough to um, to make a good, uh, nice, even surface with the um, heat sink. So now that that's done, I don't think I'm forgetting anything. I'm going to go ahead and pop the CPU heat sinks back on and we can go ahead and fire it up. All right, guys, first boot up. Let's see how she does. And yeah, I gotta press the power button a bunch of times because the uh, something's going on with this thing. I gotta look at. Pretty sure it's the power supply. Hello. All right, here we go, guys. Hey, here we go. We got a time, so everything works. Great. All right, guys. So here we go. Now we have the Mac Pro Mid 2010, 2 by 3.06 GHz, 6 core Intel Xeon, 32 gigs of RAM, RX 580, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, it was a success. I'm going to go ahead and play the before and after Geekbench scores. And yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.